Hello, friends. My name is Frank Stewart, and I'm the senior pastor of the Acts Ministries. I want to talk to you today about something that is very near and dear to my heart. It is one of the great passions of the Acts Ministries that is combating the number one plague in this country, the plague of all plagues and the epidemic of all epidemics. It is called father deficiency, or many would say fatherlessness. But father deficiency goes a little beyond just being fatherless. It goes where one does not receive the necessary vitamins, the daddy vitamin that they need from their fathers. Just listen to a few of these statistics and see if you would not agree. These statistics translating to children from fatherless homes are five times more likely to commit suicide. 32 times more likely to run away, 20 times more likely to have behavior disorders, 10 times more likely to abuse chemical substance, and 20 times more likely to end up in prison for just a few statistics. We want you to join us in the month of June as we celebrate Father's Day. We're going to have many events during the month of June, seminars, we're going to have marches. We're going to have book signings and different events. We ask that you would go to our website, AxeMinistryOnline.org, so you can receive a schedule of all the events that we're going to be doing in the month of June. Will you help us combat this number one plague in this country? God bless you. Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now, Pastor Stewart. Once again, we thank you for joining our broadcast. Thank you, thank you. Uh, what a privilege to be able to study God's Word with those that, that are interested in the Word of God. There's nothing greater than the Word of God, and to have a uh, person interested in to study the Word of God is is incredible during these times. Uh, those that seek uh, God's Word, it is it is more precious than silver or gold because it is eternal. It is eternal, and we thank you for tuning in. We've been talking about this week a subject that many of us uh, we don't like talking about. There's a natural resistance uh, when it comes to talking about hell hell, this place of torment. But it is something that we must talk about because God has commanded us to preach the gospel and to declare unto a dying world that that we can go to heaven. And Jesus came, went to hell for us, so we wouldn't go to this place of torment. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Now, when it says death, it's not talking about physical death. It's talking about the second death. Now, death is just simply a horrible word that means the separation of the body and the soul and the spirit. The body and the spirit being separated. That's what death is, a separation. Well, second death is a separation from God forever. The second death. Second death. That's why when you study in the Bible... And even when Jesus talks about those that knew him when they died, he said they were asleep. They were asleep because they're not going to be, they're not separated from him and they're not going to be separated from him for eternity. So it's very, very important that we understand that. So far, we've talked about uh, hell in the gospel of Matthew and we uh, have seen what Jesus have mentioned it uh, about eight times. About eight times. Now, the one thing that I told you is that Jesus talks about hell more than anybody in the Bible. So anything that Jesus talked about, and he talks about it more than anybody, then it is something I think that we should talk about. Now, the one thing I want you to understand and understand clearly is that we do not, talk, we do not take this subject to make people afraid because that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Hell doesn't, hell, the teaching of hell will not make a person have a great relationship with God. It won't do it. 
It is the beginning of knowledge. It's the beginning of knowledge. It is like a person says, you know, uh, there's a prison and people do wrong. They get caught. They go to prison. Now, when a person hears that going to prison, they can receive that knowledge and they can say, oh, I never want to go there because I don't think anybody that, 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 you know, plan on going to prison saying that's their goal in life to go to prison. Think about that. Nobody in prison when they was a child said my goal in life is to go to prison. No, nobody says that. But because they did wrong, not because they didn't know it was a place of incarceration. They knew that. But see, it's something within us that says I'm not going to get caught. It'll never happen to me. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, we just we feel like that. So we keep doing uh, the same old thing this, all the time and we get caught and we die and so on. So <laughs> the preaching of hell is not preached to frighten people into a relationship with Jesus Christ, a long-term relationship with Jesus Christ, because that won't work, because it's going to fade. So hell is preached, and we teach hell. We teach about hell is for, for information. It would be like telling people they could do wrong and then tell them about, about being incarcerated, about prison, about, uh, about the consequences, all right? So, so we, the Lord have us to do this, so they will understand there are consequences for living in sin. The wages of sin is death. Is death. The Lord told us that. He told Adam and Eve that. Think about this. Before Adam sinned, God didn't want them to sin. But he said to them, the day you eat from this tree, you will die. So he gave them that information ahead of time. He gave them that information ahead of time to let them know there would be consequences if they sin. Well, they did sin. They did sin, all right? Fear is not going to do it. So we don't teach it from fear perspective of fear, making people afraid, keeping them afraid, keeping them coming to church, and then they'll be end up in heaven uh, because they was fearful. No one wants that. No one wants to be in a relationship with a person that don't really love them but just there because they are fearful. No sane person wants that. No psychological stable person wants that. We want people to love us because they love us. We don't want them to love us because of what we have. We want them to love us because they love us. Well, guess what? That's what Jesus wants. That's what he always wanted. That's what he's looking for. He's looking for a friend, a friend. So when we talk about hell, it's not to frighten anybody into heaven because I don't think anyone would be in heaven because they was frightened into heaven because fear will fade. So we have talked about hell. Jesus has talked about hell. And everywhere we've talked about hell so far, it is Jesus talking. Now, in Mark chapter 9, Mark chapter 9, uh, verse 43 through 48, I want you to hear this. Uh, and if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maim than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. Now, see, when we study hell, we see all this uh, additional information that is added through the studying of hell. So now he says it's going to be a fire that shall never be quenched. I don't know what it is that we don't understand about never or forever. But brothers and sisters, it is a, it is a very dangerous time that we live in because of the level of deception. And, and many people have been deceived into believing that hell doesn't exist. But they believe heaven does. See, that's, that is a deception. Jesus talks about hell more than anyone in the Bible. And not just that. He talks about hell more than he really talks about heaven. So don't you just think about that. So through the Gospel of Matthew, he talks about hell. Uh, that word hell is mentioned uh, somewhere about eight times. Now in the book of Mark, uh, he talks about uh, if your hand offend thee, cut it off. Now, Matthew told us this, but he adds more to it. He, what he adds to it is, is better than having two hands to go into hell. Then he says, into the fire that never shall be quenched. And I know that sometimes life can appear so hard that we say we're going through so much hell but really, 
that word should not be used like that. It shouldn't be used like that. Be the, play, the way we use in this word in the Bible is as a noun. It is a noun. It is a place where people go. And the torment cannot be described. No one has ever experienced hell on earth like the Bible is talking about hell, like Jesus is talking about hell. So he, sa- he says that the fire never shall be quenched. So now he adds something to it. Mark at Mark Gospel, Jesus says a little more about it. In verse 44, it says, Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Now, that's, that's, that, that's pretty powerful. He calls it where their worm. Now, notice this. The, the body, the hand, the feet, the eyes, they're going back to the dust from where they was created, going back to the dust. From dust we are, dust we shall return. So he says to us, he uses cut it off. He's not literally talking about cut off your hand. He's not talking about cut off, uh, pluck out your eyes or cut off your feet. He's not saying that. And the reason why we know he's not saying that because when we compare scriptures, because you can cut your hand off and that don't cut off sin. You can pluck your eyes out and that don't stop sinning. Blind people sin. Blind people sin. One blind man told me that that he couldn't see, but everything else was working. What are you saying, preacher? What are you saying, pastor? Being blind don't keep you from sinning. Not having a leg doesn't keep you from sinning. I know that to be a fact. You know that. Sometimes they're even more bitter, uh, more profane, uh, using more vulgarity, more into adultery, into fornication. I'm talking about what I know. Some that don't even have legs. I'm talking about what I know. So he's not talking about you can remove that and you be free from sin because that comes from the intent of the heart. That comes from, from the heart. It's just like he says, out of abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Well, what the mouth is saying, it, it, the, mouth, the mouth is saying it, but it comes from the heart of the person. And the heart here is talking about that invisible part of us, the soul. Our soul has got to spend eternity somewhere, not our bodies. So he's not talking about physically cutting off anything because that ain't going to stop anybody from sinning. All right, that won't stop them from sinning. So he adds, he says, in a fire that will not be quenched, that worm, he's talking about uh, what Isaiah says, a worm. Uh, in Isaiah chapter 66, it talks about that worm, that, that which lives in this house, and this is the soul. He goes on in verse number 45. He says, and if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter, enter, halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell. There that word is again. Into the fire that, that never shall be quenched, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And if that eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into, the, into hell's fire, where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Pretty, pretty graphic here in Mark. He kind of combines all of that, uh, whether, it's, whether, whether it's your your feet, your hand, or your eyes. He combines all of that. But what he adds that is a little different from uh, Matthew, and this is Jesus speaking, uh, is that it's a place where a person will not be able to die. The worm will not be able to die. And what he's saying is the soul of man, that invisible part of us, the real you, the real you, that give permission to the body to do certain things. See, the body is just responding to what uh, the soul wants us to do. So, so he says, he says that that real part, when this house is dissolved, this this earthly tabernacle is dissolved, and we don't have another building. We have another building, but if we don't have another house to go to, then in hell we will be uncovered, unclothed, and be a worm that. Our soul will be there forever and forever and forever. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. 
For more information, go to AxeMinistriesOnline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart.